Receiving simulator transmission. Uploading transmitted feed. Initializing playback sequence. Log execute. Hey everyone, Cypher here, and welcome back to Cypher Plays Pokemon Heart Gold Nuzlocke. In the last episode, we took uh, we took a whirlwind tour through routes 38, 39, Olivine City, Route 40, and Route 41 to make our way here to Seanwood City. Today, we will be challenging the Seanwood City's gym, at least its gym trainers, and taking on a fight that you probably wouldn't have expected to be here if you didn't explore the area. Anyway, before we go in, I would like to show that I have changed around my team. I put Kathleen in the box. This is mainly due to while I was tr training her, we had like three separate close calls off screen because I took her back to Route 38 to train on Tauros because they give two attack EVs. And three times in a row, she ended up getting nearly one shot due to a critical hit boosted uh, horn attack. So not really feeling her around. And plus, I know that the fight that we have coming up is going to involve a very problematic electric type. So I wanted to see if... Victoria could actually help out here, and the reason I chose her in particular is because of comments I got from a friend of mine who has seen my videos and kind of reviews the new stuff as it comes out, and he told me that my opinion of Geodude, who as the game goes on past the third gym, is kind of, well, in their opinion, wrong. So I want to see if maybe I have been underestimating Victoria, so we'll keep her on. I actually, between episodes 15 and 16, got the uh, experience share by going back to Mr. Pokemon's house and talking to him with the red scale from the shiny Gyarados with from the Lake of Rage in my inventory. So should be pretty interesting to see. Anyway. We're going to be taking on the gym trainers now, and I know that this guy has a Hitmonchan, and it likely has two of the elemental punches, so I'm going to try and use Confuse Ray to turn him against himself. There we go. And now, Wing Attack. There we go. No damage. Because I know that that thing could have Ice Punch and Thunder Punch, and I really don't want to risk that. Anyway, with the experience share, Victoria will be able to catch up to the team in no time. And who knows, maybe she'll evolve from all these fights. Okay, slowdown's getting a little annoying. But... It's odd because it's usually doesn't happen this fast. Maybe it's something to do with the gym in particular. I don't know, but... We can deal with it, make our way through. Luckily, this gym is a fighting type gym, so if you have a Crobat or any Psychic type, it can be easily handled. Though I'd say Crobat is best if you're going head to head with them. If you definitely had a chance to either get a King's Rock from either going back to Azalea Town and going into the Slowpoke Well with Surf, or buying it from the Poke Athlon Dome on Sundays, then you definitely want to get it for a really fast Pokemon like Crobat here, because they can easily make use of those flinch chances that the King's Rock can bestow. Anyway, we're going to go this way and talk to this one on this side. Okay. 
just to make it so that we don't have to do as much walking around in here later. Machop. Now, one good thing to note about Machop, and this is part of the reason why I bench Kathleen, is that is her ability, no guard, and the AI will for some reason always give the Machop line no guard when it uses it, so keep that in mind because there are dangerous Machamps later on. There is a dangerous Machamp later on that you'll definitely want to make use of it. Away, just gonna wing attack again. Machoke does have a bit more bulk, so I can take it. Luckily, he's wasting time with Leer, and we're fast, so easy peasy. Not even gonna waste wing attack DP on that. We're just gonna bite. trainer. Okay. Your bottom will never be broken. Well, I won't break it, but you'll be feeling a bit of pain on it. And you got one of my favorite fighting types, hit on me. Luckily, I think that I'll be able to deal with you easily. Yep. Not as much physical defense as that and as that Hitmonchan. Though Hitmonchan I would say Generation 4 is probably the better of the two Hitmon Pokemon. And Victoria's trying to learn Lock Rock Blast. I'm gonna keep the old moves. It's basically, in my opinion, a worse uh rollout granted in a set when Pokemon battles are set to set mode rather than shift mode, Rock Blast is probably the better of the two. But need a bit of challenge for this run, I think. And now we've got a Graveler, which could be interesting. And like all other trade evolutions, the Universal Pokemon Randomizer has changed her to a level up evolution. Well, a normal trade evolution, not any item trades, those are handled differently. Anyway, with that, you know what? Let's see what Alan has to say. Sniper, good morning. It's Alan, are you sleeping in? <laughs> I found something really awesome earlier. I'll give it to you. Can you come pick it up on Route 36? Okay, well, we could do that, but that's quite a bit of a trek back. But I don't really want to. It's probably just another Firestone, because he did call me uh, while I was training during in-between episodes once, and that's all it was. Anyway, with that taken care of, I'm going to quickly head over to the camera and swap Ash to the front. Automatic camera. Yes, let's take a picture. See to take a picture. And now the team's looking all right, though. Victoria's getting Mike was asking pretty hard there. Anyway, with that taken care of, we can easily swap now. And I definitely recommend leaving this, leaving with a Pokemon that's either fast and can switch or something that can take hits and deal damage to psychic types. Real good. Anyway, 
or reasons you can see here because Suicune ran away, and of course his stalker isn't far behind. Yo, Cypher. Wasn't that Suicune just now? I only caught a quick glimpse, but I thought I saw Suicune running on the waves. Yeah, you did. It ran on the waves, all right. Suicune is beautiful and grand, and it races through towns and roads at simply awesome speeds. It's wonderful. Okay, you're really obsessed. I want to see Suicune up close. I've decided I'll battle you as a trainer to earn Suicune's respect. I'm not so sure that's how it works, but hey, you do you, man. I'll take on your challenge. Come on, Cypher. Let's battle now. Okay, so, Mystery Man, you seen. Kind of a tough fight, even though he only has three Pokemon. And it's more so for the last of his three. But we'll get to that when we get to that. He's going to start off with a Drowsy. So I'm going to start off with Langstrom's Bite and hope for a flinch. And, of course, I don't get it. Alright, well, luckily, Langstrom can at least take a bit of a hit from my weak Drowsy, so... No damage really done. Although, if he has to come back in, that's going to be... Really bad. Anyway, Pariah... I forget if this fight was in the original Gold, Silver, and Crystal, but I remember when I first fought him for the first time in Soul Silver back when I owned both of these games. He was using was a pretty tough fight. I'm just glad that he didn't get his team from the anime where he had an Alakazam, which honestly at this point in the game would be pretty tough to deal with. And luckily we're speed tied and managed to overcome it, so Pariah is actually in pretty good standing right now. And this is why I recommend having a ground type. What hey, I chose, and another reason I chose Victoria specifically, because I knew this fight was coming up. Because this Electrode, while Electrode isn't that great of a Pokemon, it is super fast, and this one knows Thunder, and I've... And I swear, this Electrode in particular always manages to land its Thunders, so you definitely want to have something that can't be affected by Thunder. You also don't want to lay a finger on it, because I think it might have Static, but then again it might also have Aftermath. Which was a new ability for Electrode in Gen 4, where basically, at least I think... Nope, okay. Sorry, I forgot. That's actually a Gen 5 thing, and it's a hidden ability, which, again, wasn't a thing till Gen 5. And Pariah wants to learn Payback. Your physical attack is not all that good, so I'm going to keep your old moves for now. I hate to remember, but you win. Okay, thank you for that. You're amazing, Cypher. I'm starting to understand why Suicune was keeping an eye on you. I'm going to keep searching for Suicune. I have a feeling we'll see each other again. See you around. Okay, so yeah, that fight can be pretty brutal if you don't come to it prepared because of that electrode. I mean, it is faster than anything you probably have at this point. Even Crobat might have... Well, Crobat might be able to outspeed it, but won't have much it that, that it can do to Electrode. Anyway, with that, I'm going to quickly heal up. Because that was actually a pretty tough fight. Let's quickly heal up. Now that that's taken care of...
I'm going to quickly head back into the gym, and then after we take care of one thing that we can only take care of while we're in the gym, I'll probably end the episode here. Kind of because I've noticed a trend with my episodes that every odd gym leader, I challenge the trainers first in one episode, and then the gym leader is the start of the sec of the next episode, and. Even, well, even number gym leaders, I take on the entire gym all at once. Don't know why that keeps happening, but might as well stick with the trend, especially seeing as this slowdown is becoming kind of ridiculous. So we're just going to quickly come up here to this place. And turn this large winch. And that gets the water off him, because if you try and talk to Chuck, the gym leader, here, with that water pouring on him, he won't be able to hear you. So, that, I'm just going to quickly make my way down. And with that, I think I will end this episode here. So, thank you all for watching. Until next time, stay gold. Playback sequence terminated. Transmission disconnected.